Hi there, I'm Stella from Stella's Yarn Universe. I hope you're all well and staying safe at home. I thought you could do with a new crochet tutorial. So I made this little last minute Easter bunny, but he's just a cute bunny in general. You can definitely make him all year round and I hope he'll cheer you up. So I hope you'll enjoy this tutorial. If you have any questions along the way, please feel free to let me know in the comments. I'm always happy to help. So without further ado, let's get started. For this little project, we'll need yarn in a DK or light worsted weight. And I'll be using this beige color, but I'm sure a super colorful bunny would be just as cute, if not cuter. Then we'll need a 2.5 millimeter hook, which is something in between a size B1 or C2. Um, either of those sizes will be fine, but if you tend to crochet quite loosely, I recommend going for the B1. Then we'll need um, safety eyes, unless you want to embroider the eyes. And if your amigurumi is meant to be played with, especially by little children, then please don't use safety eyes because they're not really safe for them, even though they're called safety eyes. So only if it's um, more like an ornament or meant to be for a keychain or um, older children. Um, it's fine to use them and these are five millimeter in diameter and if you want to embroider the eyes you'll need black yarn or black embroidery floss or whichever color you want the eyes to be of course then um, we need some fiber fill and embroidery floss in pink and white and then we'll need a yarn needle and I have another yarn needle with a pointy tip and a sewing needle with a large eye. You might only need one of these two and a stitch marker and scissors of course. So let's get started. We begin with the magic ring and I leave the the end fairly long because we'll be using it later on. So if you need guidance on how to make a magic ring, I'll link to a tutorial in the upper right corner, but there are so many methods. So if you're uncomfortable with this one, just have a little search on YouTube and find what works best for you. Then in round one, we single crochet six in the magic ring. Three, four, five, and six. Then we close the magic ring, but I don't close it too tightly just yet because that makes working in the first stitch of round two a little easier. I'm still going to loosen it up a bit to make it even easier. Oops. Then in round two, we increase in all six stitches. So two stitches in two single crochet in each stitch that's two four six eight and 12 so around 
two is complete now and now we can close the magic ring more tightly and then in round three put in my stitch marker now we keep increasing but only in every other stitch so we single crochet one and then increase in the next stitch and single crochet in the next and increase in the next so by the end of the round we'll have a stitch count of 18 In round four we increase in every third stitch so we single crochet in the next two and then increase in the third stitch and we repeat this five more times six times in total so that we'll have 24 stitches once the round is complete Round four is complete now, so we have a round of 24 stitches now. And in the next four rounds, rounds five to eight, we will single crochet in all 24 stitches without any increases or decreases. So you can pause the video here and hit play once you completed the next four rounds, round five to eight. Round eight is complete now and in round nine we will start decreasing. So we single crochet in the next two stitches, one and two, and then we make a decrease. If you haven't done the invisible decrease method with single crochet before, I'll link to a more in-depth tutorial in the upper right corner. We just single crochet the two front loops of the next two stitches together and then we single crochet two again and decrease once more so front loop and the next front loop together and we repeat this six times in total so once the round is complete, we'll have 18 stitches. Round nine is complete now. So I secured my stitch with the stitch marker because next we are going to insert the eyes and embroider the nose. And it's important that we place the eyes in the right position in order for the rest of the pattern, pattern to work out. So the left eye of the bunny from its own perspective is going to be on the opposite side of the end of our round so we were placed by a stitch marker that's the end of the round and we want to make sure that the left eye is placed approximately on the opposite side so just Keep that in mind when placing the eyes and I'm going to put them in and between round six and seven so in the middle between the four single crochet of 24 that we made the four rounds without any increases or decreases and because my safety eyes are quite, quite thick. I will just carefully with my scissors without damaging the yarn I just insert it in between. You can also use your hook for this and just prepare a little gap there just to make it more easy to insert the, the eyes.
So that's the left eye, just double checking that it's on the opposite side. That's about right. It's on the opposite side of the, the end of the round. And then I left about five stitches space in between the left and right eye. So that's one, two, three, four, five. And then the right eye is gonna go here. So I'll make a little gap there, just in between the stitches. So I don't wanna damage the fibers. And that's where the second eye goes. Let's see how that looks. It looked good, but I just want to try and see how it looks if I move it one stitch further away from the left eye, just to see if it looks better. I think this will look better in the end and that's what I did the first time with my first bunny so we'll keep it this way so actually there are still five stitches in between the eyes five full stitches and then there's half a stitch on each side so roughly six stitches in between just play around with it and leave it the way you like it most then next we're going to embroider the nose and for this I'll be using my pink embroidery floss. We only, only need a little bit and I'll be using my large eyed sewing needle for this. But even a yarn needle will do, especially if it has a pointy tip, it might be helpful in this instance. So I want to embroider the nose in a little epsilon shape. So first I'm going to think about where to place it. I'm going to start here in the middle of round seven. And now we just have to make sure that we place it in the middle. So one and a half stitches space between the left eye and one and a half stitches space between nose, nose and the right eye should be fine. So this means that it will be about two stitches wide. So I start on this side and with embroidery, it's important to stitch through a stitch rather than in between stitches. That's why the pointy needle is actually helpful here because this way you have made way more control over where the stitch goes. If you stitch through in in between stitches then you know the, the, the embroidery floss can move around and you have less control over it. So then we'll stitch diagonally downwards and we want the other side of the 
epsilon to go here. So stitch through here. stitch through to where the other end is supposed to go so in the middle through the stitch here right in the middle of round seven now we stitch through the same spot downwards because we make a little epsilon let's first stitch through and then make the last stitch just to see if this v-shape turned out the way we wanted it to it's leaning a bit towards the left eye but that's fine i'm not i'm not that fussy <laughs> i'll just leave it that way so then we stitch through here and again in the same spot where all the stitches meet. Oops, be careful not to stitch over the yarn in there. We'll need that in a bit. And that's our little epsilon nose complete. So we can just tie these two ends together inside the head and cut them short. Now before we secure the safety eyes, I want to embroider a little eyelids to give him cute sleepy eyes. And that's what we need the long yarn and four that we left when we made the magic ring and for this i'll be using the pointy yarn needle just because it's easier to thread the yarn onto it i think it wouldn't go on my large eye sewing needle so that's why i'm using this one and then i'll just start here with the left eye and this is easier now that the eye isn't secured yet from the inside so we we'll just stitch through so we're gonna make two diagonal stitches slightly covering the eye so we'll start here in this corner and then don't use too much tension because we don't want the shape of the head to change. And then we'll make one little stitch. So in the upper outer corner of the eye. So we, let's first stitch through to the inside, that's easier. Okay, so that's the first stitch done and now we make a slightly longer stitch next to it that's going to cover the eye for a bit, like the outer. like so so this is gonna go as well the other side is gonna go next to the first stitch just stitch through to the inside and this can be tricky you might need pliers Okay, 
was able to pull it through with my hand. And that's it, that's eyelid number one done. So now we can move on to the other side. And with this as well, it's better to stitch through the stitches rather than in between them because you just have more control this way. And now that we stitched through to the other side again be aware not to pull too tightly so there shouldn't be too much tension because we don't want to influence the shape of the head so again the outer upper corner we make one stitch just stitch through there A second stitch so somewhere next to this stitch and this one's going going to cover a small part of the eye so that can go there And that's done. So the second eyelid is embroidered. So now we can weave in this end just to make sure it's secured. And then we can continue with the body. Well, first we need to fill the head with fiber fill. I won't cut the end off because this way it's actually more secure there's less risk of it coming out this way and I just use it as stuffing so now we can fill the head and we'll do it just bit by bit to make sure that it's nice and evenly filled oh sorry of course first we must secure the eyes. <laughs> Almost forgot. <laughs> so just put the back ends on nice and tightly. <laughs> this looks so cute already, his little face. Okay, so now we can go ahead and fill the head. just push it in with the back of my hook and make sure that first the top of the head is filled like here underneath the back ends of the eyes and then 
we should put some fiber fill in beneath the back ends of the eyes and then on the outside of them just so that the face doesn't get distorted. That's just something to keep in mind now. And that's enough for now. So now we can continue with round number 10. In round 10, we keep decreasing. So we single crochet in the next stitch. And then we decrease. And as you can see, I'm holding the fiber fill in with my middle finger while crocheting just so it doesn't pop out and I try not to crochet it into the stitches. So we repeat this six times in total. So once the round is complete, we should have 12 stitches. And here it's important to crochet as tightly as possible so that we won't have any gaps through which the fiber will the fiber fill will show through. Now that's the head complete now. Except the ears of course, we'll add these later. But next, we'll continue with the body. And we might want to add more fiber fill now. Just a little bit more. And now in the next round, we start increasing again for the body. So we single crochet in the next stitch and then increase in every other. So that once the round is complete, we'll have 18 stitches again. So we'll repeat the one single crochet and one increase six times all together. And then the round will be complete. That's round 11 complete. Now in round 12, we'll single crochet in all 18 stitches. In round 13, we'll single crochet in the first 12 stitches. That's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, sorry, it should be 13. 
So in the next 13, now we increase in the next four stitches. So two in each of the next four. That was one increase, that's the second increase. The third increase and the fourth increase. And then we single crochet Oops. one in the remaining stitch of the round. So now we have a round of 22. In round 14, we will single crochet in the next five stitches. One, two, three, four, five. Then we increase in the next two. So two in the next and another two in the next. And then we single crochet in the remaining 15 stitches of our round. In round 15, we begin with three increases. So two, single crochet in each of the first three stitches of the round. Oops, split the yarn here, that's not good. That's it. Then in the next, and then we'll single crochet one. And we increase one. Then we single crochet in the next four. One, two, three, four, then we increase one, and we single crochet one, and then we increase three again, one, increase, two increases, three increases, then we decrease, now we single crochet in the next six stitches, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then we decrease again. And now our round has 30 stitches. In round 16, we'll single crochet in the next seven stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then we decrease. Then we single crochet four, one, two, three, four, decrease again, and 
and single crochet in the remaining 15 stitches. So then we'll have a stitch count of 28. And round 17, we'll single crochet in the next six stitches. One, oops, two, three, four, five, six, and then we decrease four times. One, two, three, four, and then we'll single crochet in the remaining 14 stitches. In round 18, we start with five single crochet, one, two, three, four, five. Now we chain three, one, two, three, and we half double crochet in this second chain from our hook and then half double crochet in the next chain. Now we continue with our round and we make four decreases That's one, two, three, and four. Then we chain three again and once again half double crochet in the second chain from our hook and make another half double crochet in the next chain. Then we continue with our round and we'll single crochet in the remaining 11 stitches of the round. So once the round is complete, including the other side of the chain, the two um, chains that we made, we'll have 28 stitches in our round. In round 19, we begin with a decrease. Then we single crochet in the next seven stitches. It's one, two, three. Now one in the other side of the chain that we made. And another one in the other side of the chain. That's one, two, three, four, five now. One in the half double crochet. That's six. And one in the second half double crochet, that's seven. Now we decrease two times. Two. 
trees. And decrease. The next one goes in the other side of the chain again. And the second one as well. Then the third one goes in the half double crochet we made as well as the fourth one. Then five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then we make a decrease. single crochet one and now we'll make a bobble stitch for the tail so we yarn over then insert our hook in the next stitch yarn over again and pull it through and now we only we yarn over again but only Pull it through the first two loops on our hook, then we yarn over again, insert our hook in the same stitch, yarn over, yarn over and again only pull through the first two loops. So we made it two double crochet now. Again yarn over, insert, yarn over, Pull through, yarn over and only put it through the first two loops. Now we have three, yarn over, yarn over, yarn over and pull it through the first two. Now we have four and we do one more, yarn over, insert your hook in the stitch, yarn over, pull it through yarn over and pull it through the two first loops. Now we yarn over and pull it through all the loops on our hook. So we should have six loops on our hook now. Pull it through all of them. Now make sure that the bobble faces outwards. And in the last stitch we Make it single crochet now. Now, before we continue with round 20, just make sure that your bubble stitch is nice and bubbly, <laughs> meaning that all the stitches face outwards so that it makes a nice round shape. Now in round 20 we'll start decreasing and we only crochet in the back loops. So we single crochet in the next two loops, in the next two back loops of the next two stitches. Oops. Careful not to split the yarn. That's one and two, and then we decrease, but only in the back loops. So insert your hook in the next back loop and in the back loop of the next stitch. Now this can be a little tricky, so we take advantage of our hook here by hooking in the back loop and then turning and twisting our hook at the same time so that we get under the second back loop there and then pull the yarn through the two back loops and finish the decrease. So we repeat this five more times, six times in total. So single crochet in the back loop single crochet in the back loop and decrease in the next
next two back loops. Now four more times and then once the round is complete we'll have a stitch count of 18. Now before we continue with the next round we'll fill the body with fiber fill. It should be nicely filled, but there should be a little bit of space towards the bottom, just so that our little bunny will be able to sit or stand like it does here on the hind legs. Now in round 21, we'll keep decreasing and this time we can single crochet in both loops again. So we single crochet one and then we decrease. And this time we decrease in the front loops again. And we repeat this five more times. So once the round is complete, we'll have 12 stitches in our round. Now before crocheting the last round, we have the opportunity to put in some more fiber fill if necessary. I'm just going to stuff it a little more just to make sure the front is filled here and also you can make sure that the um, little feet of the hind legs are pointing outwards. I think that's going to be enough so now we can crochet our last round in which we'll simply decrease six times. So we'll end up with a round of six stitches. I find it really helpful when doing these decreases especially in the last round to squeeze the body together that makes it a little easier that's number five And decrease number six. Now we need a long yarn tail to shape the body of the bunny. So using a long end and cut my yarn off here, put it through. And now we close the last round by inserting our yarn needle with the yarn end in all six front loops of the last round. So I just pull it through, but don't pull it tight yet. It's number four. five and six so now I pull it nice and tight 
And now I'll insert my needle in the middle of the last round and I stitch through here to the side that if this is round 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, so that's in between round 13 and 14 and that's where I want to shape the hind legs to give them some more definition. So I just stitch through to there. And now I pull the yarn very tight so that, not too tight of course, so you, you don't want to break the yarn, but you want a shallow dent to form here on the bottom of the little bunny which will help it to stand. So we keep the tension here. I just hold it, this little dent in place with my finger while I make the next stitch. So I just make a horizontal stitch here and just stitch through parallelly to the other side because we want it shape the leg on the other side as well and then pull the yarn nice and tight so here you see a little dent forming and this way now because of the tension that now the shallow dent in the bottom just stays in place that's good so we can leave that and now I'll just make a small horizontal stitch again towards the other side and I just work my way forward now so now I pull it nice and tightly there to shape the other leg and I make another stitch So we'll work our way forward to shape this part all the way down to the little feet or paws. Stitch through again to the other side. Now I'm making a diagonal stitch downward and I'll do the same on the other side. diagonally downward till the legs are nicely shaped so now I just stitch through here to the little paw of the left hind leg and I'll just make three stitches so I'll just stitch through here That's one, then I stitch through, leaving a little gap. That's two, and another one. Three, let me 
to make another one. Another one right here and then I stitch through to the other side. Stitches on the pull on the other side. One more in between the last two. And next, I want to shape the front bags, which are these two, these things. So I stitch through here with three round space between the little nose and then I make a horizontal little stitch and just stitch through here with two rounds space in between the bottom because that's where I want to define the shape a little better. Just pull it tightly. And this way I just make a few stitches to to just shape the four legs a little better. Just stitch through to the side here. And then I make a diagonal stitch downward to the other side. Pull it nice and tight. I think that's good. Now I stitch back through here in the middle, front middle. Oops. And now I just want to separate the two front legs with a stitch. nice and tight and now I'm just gonna weave in this end here in the bottom part now we'll crochet the little bunny ears 
We begin with the magic ring. And then we single crochet four in the magic ring. One, two, three, four, and I didn't close the ring too tightly. Then in round two, we begin with an increase. Sorry, some neighbor seems to be working in the garden. Then we single crochet in the next stitch. Increase in the next stitch. And single crochet in the last stitch of the round. Now we can tighten the magic ring properly and we need to be careful because such a small round tends to turn itself inside out in the beginning so we just turn it the right way before we continue that's it now in round three we increase further so we begin with an increase one two And then we single crochet in the next two stitches. Increase again. And single crochet in the remaining two stitches of the round. So now our round is eight stitches and in the next round we increase again in the first stitch and then we single crochet in the next three stitches. And three and repeat once more increase and single crochet three so now our round has ten stitches and in the next round we simply single crochet in all these 10 stitches. That's two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten. Now in the next round we start decreasing. So we decrease one. And 
and then we single crochet in the next three stitches one two three and repeat decrease one and single crochet three So now our round has eight stitches again and in the last round we decrease four times. To reduce our round to four stitches. That's two. three, and four. Now we fasten off and we leave the yarn end long enough to sew the ear on the head. Now we need to make a second ear, so you can go back to whichever minute I'm going to put here if you need a reminder on how to make the ear. Now that we have two ears, we can attach them, them to the head. So the way I'm going to sew them on is pointing upwards and slightly backwards and I try to fold them a little like so so this is going to be the inside of the ear but I'm actually going to make it point outwards like this so I just pin it in place to see how it looks I pinned it on round three and it's slightly behind the middle of the head place so just pin them on and have a look to see if you like the placement and then once you're happy with it go ahead and sew it on Move this one again for now and I'll be using my blonde yarn needle for this So I'll just make a small stitch through the head underneath the ear and then stitch through the last round of the ear. Remove the pin now and I'll make a few stitches like this until the ear is firmly attached.
That's it. So now I'm just going to weave in the two ends and sew on the other side. My bunny's ears are attached now. So if you like, you can now paint the bunny ears a little. So I'm just using pink blush and um, an eyeshadow applicator to just paint the inside of the ear pink. That's it, that's the ears done. Now there's just one more thing I want to add. With the white embroidery floss, I just want to embroider the little claws just to give it a little more detail. So I won't need a long piece of embroidery floss. This should do. And then I just start here on the bottom with the, with the claws of the hind leg. Just make three small stitches like this. This should have probably gone further up. Like so. Again, these need to go between stitches or in between the fibers of the yarn so that they go where you want them to go. Now I'll move on to the four legs. Just want to make sure it goes where I want it to go. small stitches on each side that's one and three and for the third one I just stitch through to the bottom so that I can weave in the end there where it's going to be invisible That's it, our little bunny is complete now. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching and crocheting along with me. If you like this video, please feel free to give it a thumbs up to let your fellow crocheters know that it might be worth it, their time as well. Sorry, the neighbor's dog is going crazy. <laughs> so thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this. I already wish you a happy Easter. Please um, stay safe and happy crocheting.